Hi, my name is James Ramsey. I'm product manager at GitLab, and I've been writing some documentation about Git's partial clone feature today. And I thought it would be interesting to record a quick video and give a brief demo of how it works. So partial clone, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a performance optimization in Git to help work with very large repositories. And by very large repositories, I mean repositories uh, greater than 100 gigabytes on disk. So this is really quite large, uh, quite annoying and slow to download. Um, and partial clone tries to make it better by only downloading or only fetching the objects that you want, either filtered by size or by file path. And I'll be demoing how to do this by file path today using a filter spec file. Um, in the Git project here that I've forked, I have a branch that I created a filter spec file on. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here is the git filter spec file. And it should look pretty familiar. It should look pretty similar to a git ignore file. And a git ignore file is really just a list of paths that you want to exclude from your repository. And conversely, the filter spec file is a list of paths that you want to include when you fetch. So they're, they're doing slightly different things, but the formats are very similar. And the format is in fact the same as the sparse checkout format used uh, if you were to do a sparse checkout. And we'll do that later when I do the demo. Um, but taking a look at this file, what I'm saying here is I'd like to clone or fetch this guilt, git filter spec. And I'd also like to include all the documentation related files when I do a fetch. This um, is obviously quite a basic example, but in a much larger project, you might uh, find lots of different teams working together on different components in the same repository. Or perhaps you have a very um, different architecture in your repository structure where you've got 20 or more different applications all stored in one monolithic repository. In that case, it's very likely that different engineers will only be working in specific subdirectories. Perhaps you've got um, some shared libraries that everyone needs to clone, but then otherwise developers are contained to specific applications and really only want to fetch the application they're working on and the common dependencies. In that instance, you might have multiple Git filter spec files uh, living inside of the directory of each application. So I might have app one slash Git filter spec and app two slash Git filter spec. And that way each team can manage their own filter specs that they need to get the data um, to get the job done. So let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. Uh, so firstly, I'm going to show you a command that doesn't work, which is the git clone command. Um, I discovered this doesn't seem to work in git 2.22 um, in my testing, um, but hopefully we'll fix it soon. So let's run it and see what happens. So this is the bug that we see um, and I'm still investigating it. But I want to point out one thing, which is in this clone command, I used the no checkout flag. And the reason the no checkout flag is important when running the clone command is that clone does two things. First it fetches and then it does a checkout. And if you were to do a checkout without first configuring sparse checkout, uh, Git would then fetch one by one all the objects needed to actually complete the checkout command um, for all the different files and directories um, for the branch. And then the, the really important key part for doing a partial clone is this filter argument. So dash dash filter, and then we're using sparse object ID, and then we're referencing the blob on the server that we want to filter by. Um, so we're referencing the partial clone test branch and the dot git filter spec file that I created. So given this doesn't work, let's uh, create a git repository and fetch manually. Okay, then we'll init, we'll add a remote. And then we need to config, uh, enable partial clone for the remote we just added. 
And now we can run get fetch. So we're using the same filter argument, you know, sorry, filter flag here with the git filter spec on the server. And then we'll fetch. And you'll notice this takes longer than a normal fetch would if we had done the same thing without a filter. And that's because the server's having to do quite a lot more work than a typical fetch because the server has to go away and work out which objects to exclude based on the filter spec that we've provided um, by comparing the paths uh, with the filter spec. If we were to have filtered by blob size, it would have to do a similar operation, looking at the size of every single blob and excluding all the large ones. And this is an area that more performance optimization needs to take place before partial clone is production ready. Because at the moment, if you had a really large repository with, that was over 100 gigabytes, scanning each blob, um, each object would be very time consuming and expensive. Um, and so the, the benefit uh, would be somewhat diminished of doing a partial clone. But now we can see that we're receiving data back. Um, so I'll jump over to this other session and we'll compare the size of the two directories. So I've got the entire Git repository and I've, well, sorry, I've got the one that we just checked out here, just fetched, sorry. Uh, we haven't checked it out yet. That's 64 megabytes. And if I compare it to the full Git repository, it's 133 megabytes. So it's about half the size. So we can see that we've actually transferred less data than we otherwise would have if we'd done a clone. Um, for comparison's sake, I can actually do a quick clone. Git clone. Um, close. Three thousand twenty-one. Git. Git. And we'll call it Git. Hmm. Oh, typo. Yeah, you'll see this is much faster. It immediately begins transferring the data, um, unlike the example over here where it sat there thinking for quite a while. Um, we'll compare the size of these. The other thing we can do to verify that we've successfully done a partial clone versus a full clone is by running the revlist command um, and counting the number of missing objects. While that command's running, let's look at the size of git full. And you'll see that it's actually larger than the bare repository because um, we've actually got all the copy of everything and then we've got a duplicate of the data in the working directory um, or the index um, because all that data has been checked out and copied um, out of the .git directory into where we expect it to be. Um, Great, so yeah, we can see that there's 88,000 objects missing um, and we would expect there to be a lot more. Um, well, in the case of this one, if we run that same command, there should be zero objects missing. Yeah, I'm running it in the wrong directory. Yep, four. We should expect this to be zero. There we go, great. So um, we've got a partial clone over here. I'll close this for now. Great. Okay, so looking at the contents of the Git repository though, we're not seeing anything. And that's because we haven't done a checkout yet. We haven't checked out any branch. Um, there's nothing here. So let's configure sparse checkout and do a sparse checkout based on the filter spec. So to enable that, we have to first um, pull sparse checkout, we want that to be true. And then we need to actually configure which paths we want to include. And to do that, we'll, we'll use the filter spec that 
we have on the server. And we've also fetched that because remember we included the filter spec in uh, the scope of our filter spec. Um, so we can see the Git repository locally has a copy of this, uh, this blob. And we can use that and just pipe it straight into sparse checkout file. And then if we run and we actually check out the master branch, we can now see we've got the documentation directory. And if we check out the partial clone branch where the filter spec is, we can also see the filter spec. And so here we have a fully working copy of the Git repository, but without a whole bunch of data. And so you can imagine for a 100 gigabyte repository, being able to exclude the vast majority of data is very convenient. Um, there's fewer files in the index, which means faster um, status operations. There's fewer objects and files on disk. So it's consuming less of your hard drive, which is really useful if you've got a laptop that's only got maybe 256 gigabytes of storage. Now downloading a 100 gigabyte repository would be a really big problem. Um, and also it's just much faster to download uh, if you're only downloading one gigabyte of a 100 gigabyte repository. So that's a big improvement. Um, so that's a quick overview of Git partial clone cloning using a filter spec to filter by paths. Um, I'll probably upload a video um, sometime soon demonstrating how to do this by blob size, although that's much simpler. Um, but thanks for listening. I hope it was interesting. Um, have a good day.